Couldn't they have just called this game God of War 4? This isn't a reboot. I think Resident Evil of all games has proven that you can reinvent the series while sticking with numbered titles. Honestly though, I'm so thrilled that this game even exists that I don't know whether I should laugh, cry, or stop smoking crystal meth. And I really like crystal meth. Kratos cuts this tree down, but does no trimming of the branches of the top half after felling it. Yet when he shoulders it to take it back home, the tree is cut down to its trunk. Get in the boat, boy. This is Kratos' son, Boy, also known as Atreus. If he seems familiar to you, that's because he resembles the I Like Turtles meme kid minus the skeleton face paint. At least this time, they only killed Kratos' wife before the game started. Still has to deal with the ashes, though. Only instead of wearing it, he has to carry the ashes up a mountain. Kratos just shot that tree down, plus it's winter. No way it catches fire that quickly from some sparks. The funeral pyre only just started burning and that fire hasn't reached the knife yet, so it shouldn't burn Boy after he grabs the handle. I guess all the game devs have had kids by now and they're putting them in games so they can protect them, instead of princesses to save and marry like they used to. Really shows the disappointing cycle of lowered expectations. This game breaks the record for ledge paint. Ledges and chasms you can jump over are marked with runes, chains will glow at a distance, and rock walls have ladders painted onto them. So it's kind of ironic then that climbing is one of the mechanical weaknesses that this game has due to how slow it is. What are you doing? Now it's guard is up. Only fire. Only fire. When I tell you to fire. Normally I would sin a game for switching the voice actor of the main character after several games. But Christopher Judge does such an amazing job of bringing a more subdued Kratos to life that I have to remove a sin. Finish what you started. I can't. I think Kratos is actually trying to make this the worst day in his son's life. I swear to you, this video isn't going to be me taking sins off for everything this game does right. But the combat is so good it gets another sin removed for never getting boring in over 20 hours of playtime. With that being said, you better enjoy fighting this troll. Because you will be fighting palette swap versions of it again and again throughout the game. Could have used a few more boss fights. Because there are hardly any which is odd given the series history. Faye's body was lying on a table inside their home before she was cremated. When Kratos and Boy returned from hunting, the table is no longer there despite neither of them moving it before they left. Anger can be a weapon. If you control it, use it. You clearly cannot. If it wouldn't be so much work, I would have included a montage of Kratos losing his shit, yelling at someone in rage and clearly not controlling his anger from the previous games. What do you want? Oh, you already know the answer to that. Baldur demands Kratos tell him what he wants to know without ever telling Kratos exactly what it is he wants. How hard would it have been to ask where his wife is? But that would have revealed too much information about a twist later, so instead we get a god who sucks at negotiation. This fight is all sorts of hell fucking yes. Anyone who is even remotely familiar with Norse myth is not going to fall for this. The one thing people know about Baldur is that he can't die so easily. The way this game teases what'll be a major reveal later with just a single line of dialogue and a slight camera pan is the kind of subtle storytelling that can actually cut through the meditative state my increased Paxil dosage has left me in. This chasm was ripped open during Kratos and Baldur's fight, yet when Kratos and Boy travel through it, there is already ledge paint down here marking the ledge you can shimmy across. And no, I will not drop the ledge paint thing. Trust me, there's a payoff for it at the end. All this time, there's been a protection stave around our entire woods. Neither of you ever noticed a circle of magical glowing trees around your home in all these years? How long will it take to get to the mountain? I do not know. Before winter falls? I do not know. Not that Kratos is acting out of character in the way he interacts with his son, but I recall him being a lot softer to his daughter and surrogate daughter Pandora. It's like Kratos started taking parenting advice from Vegeta. It's fine! See? Boy gets himself into the kind of self-endangerment situations normally reserved for G.I. Joe public service announcements. Brock the Dwarf, and later his brother Sindri, serve as the upgrade smiths, and they can seemingly transport themselves and their equipment all across this realm and others way faster than Kratos can. Except in this first meeting, where Brock can't get his Star Wars animal to move and is stuck on this pass until you help him. That axe you got, uh, it was me what made her. Me and my brother. So don't let nobody else go work on her except for us two. You and your brother made the axe originally for Faye. Why didn't you complete it back then instead of requiring several upgrades over the course of this adventure? A boar maybe? Not sure. But I'll find. Go. It is important for a warrior to keep his skills sharp. <sighs> boy is fighting Draugr alongside you in every battle. What good is hunting a boar going to be for his skills at this point? The last of his kind in all the realm and you shoot him. The last of his kind, she says, shortly before we see two more boars walking in front of her on the way to her home. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But just imagine how the turtle feels. He can't move from this spot since he has a house built into him. And she keeps a fire going in there. I know you're a god. Not of this realm, but there's no mistaking it. He doesn't know, does he? While it's certainly within the realm of reason that Freya would recognize that Kratos is a god, there is nothing to make her believe that Kratos hasn't told Boy about himself or his own godhood. It reads, Sacrifice your arms to the center of the water. Awaken again the cradle of the world. 
What? Throw our weapons into the water? Should you really trust your magical axe to the promise of some graffiti painted on a statue? <laughs> As we will learn, the World Serpent was somehow sent back from the future during Ragnarok. Ignoring how little sense that makes and what kind of time paradoxes it would create, consider that it speaks a dead language known to only one other person in the present, yet speaks this language for no good reason in its own time. How could it have learned a dead language even further in the future? The Lake of Nine changes twice during the game as the World Serpent moves more of its body out of the water and ceases displacing it. However, the lake seems to be set up for each water level, such as Tyr's Temple having boat docks on multiple levels, beaches halfway up the mountain, and the statue of Thor being completely visible even though the lake is still halfway displaced. If it isn't the bearded beaver, it is sexy. Have I got something for you too? This place was submerged only moments ago. How could you have beaten them to the temple and set up a fully operational forge in a matter of minutes? Brock? But how did you... None of your fucking business. Now get in here, I got something for you. Hear that? That's the game saying, I hear your disbelief, and I don't care. Suspend harder, you ungrateful peasant. Catch! The pile of rocks there, with that key of Yggdrasil, you can open a magic door to the branches of the world tree. A shortcut between the realms. I hear what you're thinking. Maybe Brock and his brother use these gates to fast travel to all the locations they appear ahead of Kratos. You'd be wrong, because for now, the gates are only one way and can only bring someone back here to the temple. Also, this fast travel system was useless just moments ago due to the place being flooded. So it's a bit strange Brock even kept a key to use the gates in the first place. I, I know that blade. It was one of ours, but uh, <laughs> we didn't make it for you. Sindri and Brock are not on speaking terms anymore, but they sure didn't bother trying to get away from each other, since Sindri's location is just across the bridge from Brock's. It was my mother's. She left its father before she died. Face dead? Know what I really like about this game? Not a single flashback with Faye. We never even see what she looks like. The game is content with telling Faye's part of the story here in the present through what people say about her. Brushing a bit of dried blood off the axe counts as an upgrade. I'm pretty sure Kratos could have done that himself. What is that? We must find another way up. This is the sort of game where the goalposts have wheels for easy movement away from the main characters. The witch! Wish she was here. Bet she could get us past this. My magic is useless against the Black Breath, and there's no way around it. What a random thing to suddenly wish for, only to then have it come true with perfect timing. Why wait to warn us? I was busy, saving my friend, if you remember. It wouldn't have taken more than a moment to tell them that the path of the mountain was blocked by miasma. <coughs> what? The whole entire bridge is turning. Boy, you're really strong. Even after seeing Kratos do this, Boy still believes his dad is just a human. I swear. Bugenhagen's explanation of the live stream in Final Fantasy VII was shorter than Freya's explanation of the Nine Worlds in Yggdrasil. The tree nourishes our soils. The dew from its leaves feeds our valleys and rivers. The tree's very existence supports all of creation along its boughs. Its life energy interwoven into the tapestry of life. Birth, growth, death, and rebirth. Not that I don't like the concept of every pantheon existing in unison, but how do you reconcile all the origin stories in them? Every pantheon has its own tale of how the world, humans, and gods came to be. And in that regard, they can't all be true. Every realm has a travel room that unlocks the bridge to that realm. I'm giving you the one for Alfheim. Strangely, all the travel runes are the Greek letter Omega. Weird how that worked out. To restore the Bifrost magic, you must step into the light. But be very careful not to get your You suck at giving timely warnings. First you didn't warn them about the Black Breath, then you didn't warn them that the Bifrost only had enough light of Alfine to make one journey, and you didn't warn them about stepping into the light while you had the chance, knowing you would be pulled back due to Odin's curse on you. The Dark Elf was clearly hovering above this ledge to attack as soon as they were in range. So either Kratos is stupid for not noticing the obvious, or he simply didn't care. Run, boy! Yes. Run into the path of the falling rocks. How are you here before us, dwarf? We were told our path was the only one between realms. Well, it may be the only way for you to travel, but we dwarves are full of surprises. That is not an answer. To the novice, I'm sure it all seems like magic, but... Uh, oh, all right. It's magic. If you're going to have two dwarves pull off impossible feats of interdimensional travel so your main character can still buy and upgrade equipment, simply hope we don't notice and don't call attention to it. The light! All of the dark elves clustered by the light don't notice Kratos and Boy fall into the chamber while making as much noise as humanly possible. 
Suddenly this turned into a Dynasty Warriors game. A narrow path negates superior numbers! Except when your enemies can fly and attack from any direction. You're just lucky they only come at you from along the path. Only use it as a last resort. That axe is taller than boy. He's better off with his bow while you're inside the light. You know some magical vision crap is going on when all the color gets sucked out of the scene. No way boy killed all these dark elves on his own while Kratos was stuck inside the Instagram monotone filter. For a race that can fly, the light elves certainly don't use it to their advantage when it comes to getting over walls since they wait for Kratos to open the gate. What do you think about these torches? The dead don't need light. It's pointless asking that question, kid. I've been wondering about it for years in more games than I can count, and still haven't found an answer. I've been planning to let these gears slide without sending them, but this forces my hand. Why build gears that require you to turn them by sticking your hands into the teeth? Use a crank or lever. We're almost at the summit. Nothing's gonna stop us. Sudden danger is summoned by character tempting fake cliche. Kratos really calculated the eyeball math on that falling dragon. What are these? Rated mistletoe arrows. Straighter than Heimdall and perfectly weighted. I'm guessing Sindri also keeps a pair of scissors for cutting Samson's hair and kryptonite in that bag along with the mistletoe arrows. The tattooed man. Tracks show he now travels with a child. Where would they go next? Baldur is actually looking for Kratos' wife Faye. Instead of asking Mimir where Kratos is, Baldur should be asking about her, since he knows she isn't traveling with Kratos. You were the smartest man alive, aren't you? When no one's looking, we'll be back for your other eye. Forget about being fake descendants of Francis Drake, Troy Baker and Nolan North now play the sons of Thor. If they didn't get Sully to voice Thor, then someone needs to be fired. He doesn't know what you are. I would keep it that way. How does everyone manage to correctly assume that right after meeting the two of them? It was she wanted us to spread her ashes on the highest peak in all the realms. Oh, then you've come to the wrong place, little brother. The highest peak in all the realms is not here in Midgard. It's in Jotunheim, realm of the giants. Why would Faye not be specific with her dying wish? Had Mimir not been in prison here to tell them, they would have left her ashes here on this peak and went home, instead of on the peak in Jotunheim. What do we do? Yes! First, you need to cut off my head. I'm going to cut off your head now. You know, this has been a series largely devoid of humor until this game. What a missed opportunity that was. Kratos can deadpan with the best of them. But if she fails, he will be dead. He tortures me, you know. Every day, brother. Wouldn't himself cease to it personally, and believe me, there is no end to his creativity. It's becoming increasingly clear that the Deads are playing with the same narrative deck they used in the original series. The gods are assholes who betrayed the giants and took credit for creating everything. They pretty much swapped out Greek gods for Norse and Titans for giants. The arrows. Give them to me. Now. You find any more, you destroy them, understand? Freya doesn't notice the bright green mistletoe arrow head holding Boy's quiver in place on his chest. Reviving a severed head is a lot simpler than healing an arrow wound in a boar. You are God. Leader of the Vanir, once yes, but no longer. You did not think it important to tell me. Kratos really needs to work on his god sense. Every other god can instantly tell that he and his son are gods. Speak of Baldur. He claims nothing harms him. Aye, Baldur is blessed with invulnerability to all threats, physical or magical. The boasting of a god. Everyone has a weakness. This game really thinks the tale of Baldur is so obscure that people don't already know that mistletoe is the only thing that can kill him. Why are there two different methods for speaking to the world serpent in the lake? First throwing your weapon in the water, then blowing a horn. How does one blow a horn with no lungs? The world serpent has been living in this lake for centuries, and only now decides to eat the statue of Thor. We need two things to get us into the land of the giants. First, we need to learn the travel rune that opens realm travel to Jotunheim. Second, we need to carve that rune into the special gateway. Only the tip of a magical chisel opens that gate. Luckily, I know where it is. Kratos and Boy never question why Faye would ask them to take her ashes to a location that is almost impossible to reach. And Faye asked them to do this without giving them any instructions on how to do it, while knowing that it would require them to do things they had no clue about and would have to luck into. She must have really counted on Mimir being eager to help them out. Here, catch! <laughs> Kratos is already so much of an asshole he doesn't need to eat apples to look like one. But how were you not seen? There is nowhere here to hide. Oh that. It's a little trick my people can pull. A special way of not being seen. You can be invisible? More like I can step into the realm between realms, and your mind doesn't understand what it's seeing, so it sees nothing at all. It doesn't seem to work on dragons, though. They had to throw a lampshade over that line to avoid the potential plot hole why Kratos had to save Sindri from that dragon. Shush! I need complete silence for this.
You need complete silence for tapping the handle once. Dig in and push with everything. This is pretty much 99% Kratos pushing the hammer and 0.5% boy helping. The other 0.5% is a gentle breeze blowing against it. We make a piece of the chisel and be gone before they even notice. Boy isn't the only one who likes to tempt fate moments before a threat appears. Uh, I need... no. no. Tyr's vault was locked until Kratos opened it with a chisel, and the door is right behind them. So how did Modi get in here to ambush them as they tried to find the travel room to Jotunheim? But I'm that fucking hammer! But now, everyone's gonna think I only got it. Cause Magni's gone! Won't be a joke! But if I kill you, no one's gonna laugh at me. Allow me to explain my motivations that cast me in the most pathetic light possible. This is no ordinary illness. The boy's true nature, your true nature, fights within him. There is a rare ingredient found only in Helheim. The keeper that protects the Bridge of the Damned. I need its heart. This illness seems pretty specific to Boy. Since there can't be too many gods that believe they're immortal, but Freya instantly recognizes it for what it is and even knows a remedy that uses a one-of-a-kind ingredient. Also, how come Kratos never suffered from this illness? Kratos was born half-god as well and didn't find out about it until he was a grown man. Hell. The Realm of the Dead. Do you know it? This one. What would a God of War game be without a trip to the underworld? At least Kratos didn't have to die this time. As for the dead, your frost axe will be useless. You'll need to find something else. Then I must return home. I'm not going to lie. I yelled in excitement when I realized the Blades of Chaos were returning. Despite Freya's turtle house being just downstream from Kratos' home, they never encountered her until recently. As awesome as this scene is, I have to point out that the Blades of Chaos were stripped from Kratos at the end of the first game by Ares and were never seen again. After that, Kratos used the Blades of Athena and then the Blades of Exile until he left Greece for Midgard. So at some point, Kratos went looking for and found the Blades he used to kill his wife and child and brought them here with him to Midgard just so he could never use them again. There's no way you can hide, Spartan. I think this is the third voice actor Athena has had in this series. Let me take this moment to tell you that what you are about to do is absolutely insane. Not even Odin can survive this cold. Kratos can survive the cold of Helheim due to the Blades of Chaos. And I suppose later when Baldur comes here, he can survive since he can't be killed. But Boy also later ends up here. And he doesn't freeze to death. The Gatekeeper of Hell is just another troll. They really needed a few more boss fights in this game, didn't they? Teleportation is always used to be a dick cliche. Why even hide behind the rock when dwarves can step between the realms to hide themselves? Did they forget about that already? Oh, my equipment's in Midgard. Be right back. I'm not sure what Brog did back there since there's no smithing equipment behind this stone, and he disappears right after upgrading the blades. And no, I'm not accepting that stupid explanation they came up for for how dwarves can go invisible. All this time caring for Boy, and Freya still failed to notice the mistletoe arrowhead on his quiver strap. I always suspected Vaporub included ingredients straight from the bowels of hell, and now I have proof. When I came to these shores, I chose to live as a man. But the truth is... I was born a god. Technically, you were born a demigod. You didn't become a full god until you killed Ares and were made the god of war. Can I... turn into an animal? Can you... turn... into an animal? Kratos' reaction is funny enough to remove a sin, but I'm removing a sin because this is a brilliant and subtle hint as to who Boy actually is. Tyr was killed centuries ago, and it wasn't that long ago that Kratos had his adventures in Greece. So Tyr having a vase from Greece in his temple that depicts Kratos makes little sense given the timeline. How do we get you out? Full chains on the wall! Why make a trap that at best can only kill one person and leaves a way out if there are two people? And then make a second trap if they solve the answer to the first? In fact, why even have a way out of the first trap if you're just gonna spring a second one on them? But we're gods. We can do whatever we want. It took less than a few hours after finding out he was a god for Boy to commit murder in cold blood. He couldn't even finish off a deer the other day. Baldur shows up just in time to push the goalpost back just a bit further by destroying the gate to Jotunheim. That knife in the shoulder will affect Boy about as much as you would expect from a video game shoulder wound. Keep in mind that his weapon of choice is a bow, which requires a working shoulder. Yeah, I guess I can take another sin off for what looks like Conor McGregor having a UFC fight on top of a dragon. When am I ever going to see that again? For cinematic reasons, the slot for the Bifrost is on the front of the altar now instead of facing the door. And when the bridge opens, the full weight of Asgard will come crashing down on you. But you don't have a Bifrost. How can you activate the bridge? Hell, now that I'm thinking about it, how did you come here from Asgard at the start of the game when the bridge was underwater and the realm travel room was not working at that time? I don't recall the travel gate ever sucking people through it like this. They both survived this. You will honor your mother and abandon this path you have chosen. And just like that, Boy is back to being a good kid. Helheim employs convenient cinematic torture by showing you important events from yours and other people's past. This seems more handy for informing others of important information than inflicting torture on someone. If Kratos took this idea of turning boats into hot air balloons back to Midgard, he could revolutionize travel. 
and physics. Face me, father. It is time to end this. Yes, my son. It is time. The Kratos from God of War 3 sounds a lot more like Christopher Judge than I remember. Oh, that's a good callback. The last time we saw something from Kratos' point of view is when he beat Zeus to death. We see that again here while we're witnessing that moment, only to be interrupted by his own son. I have a plan! Jump! That wasn't much of a plan, but okay. I mean, you were gonna just slide off it anyways. Things are getting a bit too convenient. First, they fall through the roof of Tyr's temple into Odin's secret room that contains a missing giant shrine about Tyr that explains how he's able to hide the Bifrost Tower to Jotunheim. Then Mimir's eye accidentally reveals the key they need to open another section of the temple that will let them restore the missing tower. Can you make it? You only saw a picture on a shrine of the key, and it was pretty clearly an artistic depiction, not a blueprint. The dwarves should not be capable of recreating it from just that alone. Sindri must keep his half of the brand hot and ready, because he pulled that out of his belt already glowing. Great Aldumlazadas. That's the Unity Stone. Thanos must have missed that one. We did it! The tower's back where it belongs! Now Tyr's travel room can take us to Jotunheim. Doesn't this mean that Odin can get to Jotunheim now? Keeping Odin out was the reason Tyr hid the tower in the first place. This isn't going to work. What? There's no travel crystal. Tyr must have used his own eyes to refract the energy. It was his final failsafe. One last goal postponement. Thankfully, this one doesn't require you to do much more than fight the final boss. Ah, uh, he thinks it might still be in his stomach. Um, and he's open to letting you go into his mouth to look inside. Good thing the statue of Thor that contains Mimir's other eye didn't pass very far through the world serpent's stomach, because this thing spans all of Midgard. They could have been rowing for days. Finally, we're going to Yudnum. There's no stopping us now. Laddie, have you ever heard the term tempting fate? No, he hasn't. He clearly wants to turn on hard mode in real life. They survived this. Kratos probably could, but boy, doubtful. If they plan to stick with the canon ways the Norse gods die, you can spoil yourself by reading the Ragnarok Wikipedia page. Ah, no. <laughs> no. I have nothing more to hide. Well, mostly. You still haven't told him that you killed your previous family and wear their ashes on your skin. If Boy didn't accidentally put his hand on the wall while in Jotunheim, they never would have discovered the murals that reveal Faye was a giant and the Kratos and Boy's journey was part of a prophecy to bring about Ragnarok, and finding this out was the whole reason Faye asked for having her ashes spread on the mountain. She left a lot to chance by not telling them the truth before her death. This game can hint that Kratos will die all it damn well pleases. It's not like we don't anticipate that. It's only happened three times already, and three times he's fought his way out of the underworld. Look, it's Mother's. She was here. Faye was a ledge painter all along? Kinda makes sense when you think about it. Who else but a giant could easily paint markings in all these hard to reach places? I don't know why Odin is so obsessed with getting to Jotunheim. All the giants are already dead. I guess there's just one thing I don't understand. My name on the wall. The giants called me... Loki? This twist can hit you like a truck, since it was very subtly hinted at in some very indirect ways. The game lore bombs you with Norse myths every chance it gets, but never once mentions Loki, who is a pretty important character in them. This twist is so well hidden in plain sight that I'm willing to overlook the fact that they had to use some time travel nonsense for the world serpent to appear in the present since he's supposed to be Loki's son. In a few years, you can find out. And if you pre-order now, you can get Mjolnir in three different exciting colors. been small or puny or sickly or misshapen you would have been discarded